Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Beast! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available 2574 BC, the album. Dad, shimmy, shimmy. AF, listen up. I'm not a fool. I just want some respect. So close the door if you want me to respond. Hell yeah, cause prophecy is my middle name. My last name is Control. No, my first name ain't Baby. It's Peter. Mr. Mon, if you're nasty. Peace. How are you guys doing today? Oh my God. Listen, Linda, listen, okay? I don't know if Linda ever listened, but listen, Linda, okay? I know I say this a lot in my videos, but no, true story, I was going to take the whole day off today because last night I binged eight episodes of Vanderpump Rules. I am trying to get through every season until the new season comes out on January 30th, and so I am like nearing the end of season four. I've got five, six, seven, eight, and I've got six seasons still to go through, and last night I binged like eight episodes, and so I was like... I'm just gonna, I had therapy today, and then I was like, after therapy, I am just going to spend the entire day binge watching these shows and stuff like that, right? And I thought, well, Alex will be home, he'll want to watch Vanderpump Pump Rules with me maybe, and things like that. And we also have to catch up on Miami as well, Real Housewives of Miami. Well, I was texting with my husband, and I was like, oh, you have your meeting tonight, don't you? It's like this monthly meeting on Thursday nights, and he doesn't get home until later. And he was like, yeah, that's tonight. I'll be home, like, after 8.30. And I was like, oh, I've got all these, I've got all these hours to fill until my husband gets home. I just want some respect. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was like, well, when in doubt, why not film a drama video? Because I actually have things to talk about today. I have... Things to talk about with Jeffree Star uh, being banned from TikTok. I have uh, lots of opinions about that. And a Colleen Ballinger has come out again and spoken about what happened last year, okay? She's like spreading this out throughout videos. I think because her views are not doing great and people are going to her videos to see if she'll say anything about it. And so she's come out and she said something again. I was tagged in this on Instagram. I did not watch the vlog. I'm not spending the time to watch her vlogs. Um, so I, I, if, if she says something, people will let me know, but I do have some opinions about that. So I want to talk about that. But before I do, before I do, I need a little Diet Coke. I have to tell you, uh, so I was listening to a little Janet Jackson control, uh, nasty, uh, my cousin Caroline. So she was probably 16 or 17 at the time. And I was like 13 or 14. And she got the amazing responsibility of basically taking care of me for an entire summer and carting my butt around everywhere to like tennis practices and stuff like that. Right. This whole summer. And so my cousin Caroline she knew every word to the... Uh, Janet Jackson is probably one of my favorite musical artists of life, just so you don't know. In case you don't know. <laughs> Yo, Janet, I'm about to get this. You want this, but do you really think that you can get this at first you just this? Now you try to kiss this. Tell them, girls. Too late you miss this. Why? Because we need a man that's swift, quick, and clever, ready at the drop of a dime to do whatever, not trying to front or fake to save face, because I'm with that day, anytime, any place. Tell him, Jay, you want this? Well, actually, that's MC Light. Um, I love <laughs> Gina Jackson so much. I love her, I love her, I love her, I love her. She's probably one of my favorite musical artists of life. But anyway, so this whole summer, my cousin Caroline, now we do Cousin Fun Day, okay? She still knows all the words, because the other day, a Janet Jackson song came on, and she knew all the words. I was like, oh my God, Carol, because you've told the story a million times. So we would drive around that summer, and she knew every word to the Janet Jackson Control album, and I thought she was so cool. So what's up with this guy? Do you really like him that much? Yes, honey, I love him. He is fine. He does a lot of nice things for me. I know he used to do nice stuff for you, but what has he done for you lately? Listen up. I'm not a fool. I just want some respect. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, huge Janet Jackson fan. So anyway, what was I telling? So, um, so yeah, so I was going to just watch Vanderpump Rules all day today and get caught up and stuff like that. But I thought, why not 
talk about the nastiness <laughs> of Jeffree Star and Colin Ballinger. Actually, so what's so funny is whenever I like am getting ready to make a video, and by getting ready, what I mean is like make the bed, throw on a hat, and figure out what I'm gonna wear. And I was like, oh, I wore this hoodie yesterday. <laughs> it's fine. I took it off after my video and I folded it and I put it over my couch. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna wear it again today. I'm not going down in the basement and trying to trick the people with put on a different hoodie. It just, it just, people don't really care, right? So I was going through my songs and um, I was like, play, I just play my iTunes on shuffle until a song comes on. And that's sometimes how I pick a song to sing over here. Well, Janice Ian at 17 came on and I just sang that like a week ago or maybe it was like a week before I left on vacation. So I was like, I don't want to sing that again. And then I was like, oh, somebody requested for me to sing Little Red Corvette by Prince, which is interesting because I've sang that many times. Um, on video before because I love the song Little Red Corvette. Um, I love I Would Die For You by Prince. I love Beautiful People. I love Purple Rain. I love all those songs by Prince. Purple Rain, which might be one of the finest movies that has ever been made in uh, film history, I just wanna say, okay? I mean, it's so bad, it's good. So anyway, I, but I love the soundtrack to that. Oh my God, if you guys have never heard, now I'm not talking about the Marilyn Manson Beautiful People, I'm talking about is that is it called beautiful people or a beautiful people let's look at let's look it up and see i can't remember exactly the beautiful people i think it's called the beautiful people actually the beautiful people uh prince the beautiful ones the beautiful ones prince and the revolution how could i forget anyway the beautiful ones oh my god i love that song so much I love that song so much okay this girl this is so funny because i used to work with this girl named nicole way back in the day and when I was singing this song, the Janet Jackson song at the beginning, I know this is what y'all came for. Because yesterday, 10,000 of you watched me do a video about whether or not it was a moose or a deer. And we're going to get to that in just a second. before we, Because there's a real short explanation I have to make, okay? Because I know Moose Gate 2024 will forever, forever go down in history on my channel, okay? On whether this pillowcase, on whether it is a moose or a deer. And I have definitive proof, okay? I have definitive proof of what it is. So we're going to get to that in just a second. But um, I used to work with this girl named Nicole way back in the day, right? And Nicole had been, when she was like growing up, she was like into real into roller skating and stuff like that. And she'd actually been on like the cover of like roller skating magazine or something like that like this like all posed and stuff like that and so I would always say to her I already knew the answer but just to get her going and I'd say Nicole what was the song that you like because she won this big championship and I'd be like girl what was the song that you won the championship to right and she would be like that it's that song I can never it's by the Gap Band and it says Charlene and then it's like Charlene push the pedal to the metal do you guys know what song I'm talking about I love that song I probably have it in here somewhere it's by the Gap Band okay and it's like Hey, Charlene, push the pedal to the metal. Do you remember that song? Well, that's what she won on, right? So anyway, Nicole and I loved music, and she loved Prince, and we would sit there and just, like, sing the beautiful ones over and over and over and over again, and Purple Rain. I mean, how could you not with Purple Rain? But anyway, so today, when I was preparing my lyrics, my lyrical medley for this for this intro today, right, and I'm singing this song, okay, Nasty by Janet Jackson. I just want some respect. And the part where it says, um... Um, uh, okay, wait, hold on a second. I gotta go through the lyrics again. <laughs> My first name ain't... Okay, wait, how's it go? Um, yo, Janet, I'm about to get the... I can't, I can't think about it. Listen up. I'm not a fool. I just want some respect. It's <laughs> close to you want me to respond? Hell yeah. Oh, because Prophecy is my middle name, all right? Now tell me why I kept on thinking of this friend of mine, Nicole. And it goes, because Prophecy is my middle name. My last name is Control, okay? But why did I keep on going in my head? Because pro And I was like, if you sit down on video, you're going to have to redo this intro four times. And I didn't. It was a one-take wonder, okay? Because Prophecy is my middle name. My last name is Nicole. <laughs> I am I am such a threat for getting lyrics wrong, but you know what? I don't care. I love to see the YouTuber that can sit down for an hour on video and literally hit record and hit stop, okay? And say as much as I say. With lip gloss and a Diet Coke, okay? You know what? They can't. They can't. They can come for my gig all day long. They can say whatever they want to say, but they can't sit down for an hour without a bunch of jump takes and all that kind of stuff in the video. They just can't, okay? And they sure as can't sing, sing Janet Jackson as fine as I can, okay? Like a moth to a flame, burned by desire. <laughs> oh my god, I love Janet 
Jackson so much. But anyway, that's probably my favorite Janet Jackson song of life, I think. I don't know. But anyway, that's the way love goes. I used to have the best mix to that song ever, this dance mix to it. I don't have it anymore. It's on a CD, probably somewhere in my basement. But anyway, what was I saying? The Underpump Rules. Oh, Moose Gate 2024. Y'all, I just want to thank y'all so much, okay, for engaging with me for Moose Gate 2024. Now, if you're just here for the Jeffree Star calling Ballinger uh, drama, what you don't know, okay, is that for the last week, I have been going through Moose Gate 2024, okay? Now, Jaclyn Hill had Lipstick Gate, Michaela Nagara had Mascara Gate, and I have Moose Gate, okay? And Moose Gate is, and before I change these sheets, which I'm getting ready to do, okay, before I change these sheets, I wanted to address this one last time, okay? Because I have definitive proof, okay, on whether or not this is a moose or a deer. So, I held up these pillowcases, and I said something about this being a deer, okay? Then yesterday, I went and I did this video saying I was very confused. Used, okay, it was very nice of you, like 10,000 of you watched this stupid ass old man talk about uh, whether or not this was a moose over a deer. I really appreciate it, okay? I have to tell you what's so funny about this is, let me just put this in perspective for you, okay? <laughs> you talk about comments on videos, let me just put this in perspective for you. Okay, so my video yesterday got, oh, well, I guess it got not, t didn't hit 10,000 views yet, it's at 9.9 thousand views, Okay. My video that I did on I'm Back and I'm talking about Colleen Ballinger and Shane Dawson and all these people and, and uh, Gypsy Rose Blanchard and all that kind of stuff, it got 21,000 views, okay? So it got twice as many views. It got 396 comments on that video, okay? My video talking about a moose yesterday versus a deer got 370 comments <laughs> on it, okay? And let me just tell you, the comments are all about, these poor sheets will not see daylight next Christmas, LMAO, okay? I mean, all these people are commenting about the moose. So if you don't know, I was saying that, okay, that I can totally understand, hold on a second, where is it? I can totally understand because it's got more of a fuller body, that this is a moose, but I didn't understand that this is not a deer because it looks more slender and things like that, okay? And now, I really was, people think I'm joking about this. I really was confused. Like, people would say, Peter, that's a moose, okay? If I tell you, I, so I threw it up on Instagram, and the amount of people that said to me, it's a moose, it's a moose, I mean, some people were very serious about it, okay? Some people are like, Peter, I don't know if you're joking or not, but like, that's a, it's, it's a moose. Are you okay? I'm like, okay, like, let's not take it too seriously. It's a pillowcase with the picture of a deer on it, not a moose. Let's just be very clear, okay? It's, it's a deer, <laughs> not a moose, okay? Although I will say this one kind of looks like a moose, and then all these people were like, you know, in my DMs wanting to tell me things. Like, for example, I, I have a few screenshots here. So let me re reference these people on here. So, like, for example, Amanda. Amanda was nice enough that she wanted to, um, she wanted to send me a little code here of the difference between a deer and a moose. I want to say, Amanda, thank you so much for that, okay? And then Paige, she was sweet enough to put up this picture of the difference between a deer and a moose, okay, that she found on the Google. See, the Google's amazing thing, okay? I still wasn't convinced. I still wasn't. But I do have to say I have definitive proof, Okay. <laughs> Y'all are like, where is this going? This is not the Colleen Ballinger video. Just get over it. We're going to get to that in just a second. Who'd care anyway? Okay. So I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to look up these sheets. Okay? <laughs> Here, let me just show you. <laughs> got to put down my display brightness because if I don't, y'all won't be able to see the picture of the world. Okay. So let me get to my receipts. So I was like, I'm just going to look up these sheets. Okay? So here are the sheets that I ordered off of Amazon. Okay? You can see the description at the top, and then underneath there, you can see if there's more of a description. Okay, now you've all seen this, okay? With definitive proof underneath here. So let me turn my, my brightness up on my phone so I can actually see my damn receipts. Okay, so, hold on a second. So I go to these sheets, right? <laughs> Great Bay Home 100% Turkish Cotton California King Holiday Lodge Flannel Sheet Set. And I'm thinking on here it's going to say... With Christmas trees, bears, moose, and deer. That's what I think it's going to say, right? Okay. Great Bay Home 100% Turkish Cotton California King Holiday Lodge Flannel Sheet Set. Deep Pocket Sheet Sets. Warm Double Brushed Camp Bed Sheets Flannel Sheets. Okay? And then I go down here where you can order them. And it says size. California King, material, cotton, P 
pattern, animal, brand, Great Bay Home, and then there's the color on here, what the color sheets are. Checkered mousse. <laughs> Like, not that this sheet company is trying to bugger me too by saying call it these sheets are called the the name of these sheets, if you look them up on Google, is checkered moose. Okay. <laughs> so there, alright. I apologize to the moose community, to the meese community, to the mooses everywhere. I apologize. All I had to do was Google search it. I don't know why. I'm telling you, some of these, I know y'all sent me pictures of antlers and what antlers for deer and moose look like. I'm telling you, she still kind of looks like a deer to me. But listen, if they're called checkered mooses and y'all sent me 9 million receipts of the difference between a moose and a deer, y'all are right. I can admit when I'm wrong, okay? It's a moose. <laughs> checkered moose. It's a checkered moose. I'm over it. I'm over it. So anyway, we're done with all that. Okay, so... Anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. And so anyway, first of all, psychic genius of the world, I just want to say that apparently Trisha Paytas and Moses came out and they actually, I have like a, a clip of it right here on my phone, but apparently that I saw on Twitter, they came out and they like called their doctor on the phone to find out the gender of their baby and apparently they announced that, well they did announce, that the gender of their child is a girl, which I said in my uh, video. So yet again, I'm a psychic of the world. And with that, I need a Diet Coke. So, in some respect, like Gina Jackson said. Okay. So, let's get into the drama today. I don't know if I want to talk about Jeffree Star first, or if I should talk about um, Colleen Bat. Let's just talk about Jacqueline Hill first. And then, no, no. <laughs> today's not a Jacqueline Hill video, Peter. Pull it in, pull it in, girl. Okay, let's talk about Jeffree Star first. Okay. So, Jeffree Star apparently was banned, allegedly, I don't know, do I have to say that with that? He was banned from TikTok for seven days, okay? And he came out, and I watched the whole clip that he put out. Um, Rich Lux put it up on Twitter. I saw it somewhere else. I think I saw it on the TikTok, too, where Jeffree Star came out. And I was actually, so if you guys don't remember back in the day, I was referencing James Charles, and I taped these forks to my finger, and I, and I did all this kind of stuff, played with the forks and all that kind of stuff as like fingernails. So I see this clip of Jeffree Star talking about why he got banned from the TikTok Live. Okay, he can still post over there. He can do makeup reviews and stuff like that, but he can't go on TikTok Live. He's real upset because there's a TikTok Live event. Okay. <laughs> Apparently the Oscars of the TikTok are going on and he is not in attendance. Okay. So anyway, about the whole time through the whole thing that he's explaining it, he's patting down his hair like this with his nails. And I was like, oh my God, for this video, I so have got to tape on those plastic nails. Unfortunately, I've been cleaning out my kitchen in my basement, and those nails are no longer with us. They are in the trash, okay? So, I don't have the forks, or I think they were knives. I'm going to have to buy some more plastic knives. Don't, please don't send them to my P.O. box, because I know if I say that, tomorrow I'll get the 400 sets of plastic knives to my <laughs> all different colors and shades and things like that to my P.O. box. Like, I can buy my own plastic knives. I'll, I'll get on Amazon Prime tonight, and I'll order them. They'll be here tomorrow. But anyway, so he's doing all this and his explanation. It's really unfair that he got banned from TikTok. Now, I did not see the original TikTok live. He apparently had something like, I don't some ridiculous amount. He said 200,000 people or something. I don't know how many people he had in his TikTok live. Quite frankly, I don't care. Okay? So he goes in his TikTok live and apparently he's just sharing his opinion with people. He's, he references that he was kind of like sharing his opinion about like world issues. I think he kind of hints at that he was sharing like his political opinions about things and stuff like that. The only thing he really specifically says is that he's addressing like the landing on the moon is what he said. Something like that is what he says in this thing, right? And I'm like, mm, is that the only thing that you said? You got banned for just talking about the land, the moon landing? Is that is that what it was? Because we all know Jeffrey Star is a little bit more vocal than this, right? So, I'm sure he had a lot more to say about that, right? So, I'm watching this whole thing, and you can tell he's really, really upset about being banned on TikTok Live, okay? Now, I just want to step back for a second. 
Jeffree Star is a self-proclaimed makeup mogul, okay? The CEO of this self-made makeup company that would sell out literally in a half an hour, okay? Now he can't do that anymore. He stopped going on YouTube, but apparently he's going to make a return to YouTube or something. And then he um, is now on TikTok Live battling 22-year-olds and calling a bunch of grown adult women alcoholics and coming for people online and getting real excited with Eugenia Cooney because he's getting tips and now he and Eugenia Cooney are going on a road trip to visit <laughs> Gypsy Rose Blanchard. This is this is the world that you work so hard to create for yourself, Jeffrey. I'm confused about this, okay? I mean, I, in all honesty, I don't, I like, I, I'm very confused about this, right? Like, it, it's kind of sad to me, like, when you look at <clears throat> I think you all know I do not think that Jeffree Star is the greatest person in the entire world, okay? That being said, coming from where he did of making himself famous on MySpace, okay? Making his own music on MySpace to the point where he then went on the Warp Tour, okay? His music was very sought after. He had a huge following just for his music. Then he started on YouTube, and one of, it was one of the, the huge original OG beauty gurus, okay, that we had ever seen on that size before, came out with three liquid lipsticks. Three. His company started with three liquid lipsticks, okay, I believe, and then blew his company up to the point where it was like every sale he was selling out with like a half an hour, okay? And, I mean, people were online for that Shane Dawson collaboration and all this kind of stuff. So, I'm like, okay, then he says that he ain't getting no views on YouTube anymore, so he's going to go to TikTok. He starts on TikTok doing these makeup reviews and things like that, but then that goes into very quickly, while he's feeding out this idea that he's going to do, come out with this, this book, this supposed memoir, tell-all book, whatever, right? Which, in reality, if you know anything about marketing, what would be smart would be for him to be on multiple platforms at the same time that the book would be come out, right? Which means that he'd be very active on Instagram, very active on YouTube, and very active on TikTok because then he would be cross-pollinating all those audiences with his presence, okay? And then that way, when the book comes out, it would be multiple aspects of selling, right? Not just TikTok Lives. I don't know that I think that TikTok Lives and the people that are watching those are going to be the people that are going to be the people that are going to be buying his book. I think the people that are going to be buying his book are the diehard Jeffree Star fans that have been buying his makeup palettes for years, buying the Barbie plastic mirrors, buying everything on and on and on, right? Okay. So, for me, it's interesting. It 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 doesn't surprise me if he is making a regular return to YouTube and going back over there because He's not doing that well on TikTok, and I think that TikTok has kind of, like, figured him out. Okay, so he goes into this, like, ex explanation of him getting banned from TikTok. But basically, it, again, is another victimization of Jeffree Star by himself that TikTok is being really unfair to him because for 20 years, he has shared his opinion on social media, and he has never been banned or scrutinized for sharing his opinion, and now... He is banned, okay? Well, unfortunately, Jeffrey, a lot of people are banned on the daily from TikTok for their posts, for everything else, for saying things that people don't even think are incorrect or wrong or whatever, okay? I don't know what he said in this live. My 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 guess is that it like somebody reported it or I don't know because there were a lot of people he said in there. And he said it in a way that there were like so many people in there. But, Jeffrey, you have to remember, okay, you've, you've literally come for a lot of people. You've come for Manny MUA, you've come for Laura Lee, you've come for, <laughs> in the past, James Charles, Gabriel Zamora. I'm not saying rightfully so that you haven't come for, you've come for tons of people, okay? And I'm not entirely sure that those people don't have their own fan groups and fan bases that might come for you as well, in retrospect, okay? And so, do I think that Jeffrey Star, from time to time, has the ability to say something that's kind of problematic that might get him banned from TikTok? Probably, probably. And, you know, but he plays this whole thing about, like, it's really kind of, like, unfair. And, and But then it's interesting, okay? Because what he does is, and I was, like, waiting for it, okay? Because TikTok right now is his bread and butter. I don't think he's doing that well in the makeup industry anymore. I don't think he's really selling that many units of his makeup. And, in fact, <clears throat> I think the majority of his makeup that he sold the last time, other than to his remaining fans that he has, was on TikTok Live, right? So he really needs TikTok, okay? 
the old Jeffree Star would have come out and said, F TikTok, you don't want me over there. You're going to ban me for a week. F you. I'm not coming back. I'm going back to YouTube. I'm going to do Instagram Live. I'm done with you. We all know that's who Jeffree Star is, okay? Jeffree Star needs TikTok too badly. So what does he say instead? And I knew that this is what he was going to do. He goes, I have just really loved TikTok. I've been on TikTok since April of 2023. Girl, cry me an effing river. Do you know how many TikTok people have been over there trying to make it for years before you were on TikTok, girl? Okay? But you float over there in April or March of 2023 and you instantly think that you deserve everything that TikTok has to offer. This is where Jeffree Star doesn't realize that he still has to pay his dues, okay? So, I mean, there's a lot of people that are working a lot harder on TikTok than Jeffree Star, okay? And in all honesty, I mean, in all honesty, I mean, I have friends of mine that have worked 30 and 40 years to save their money. You know, I have many, many friends of mine, many family members and parents of friends of mine that have worked their entire lives, right? You know, my dad worked for 55 years before he retired, right? They've worked their whole lives to be able to retire one day and travel the world and go places they've never gone and spend time with the people that they love, okay? So for Jeffree Star, at this point in his career, to want to sit in a room, okay, in a robe at home and do hours long, I mean, he said in the thing that he had been on there for like two hours or something, okay? Or an hour or two hours or something like that. So you're literally sitting several days a week at home on TikTok battles with people that you do not know, okay? Except for that they got lucky on TikTok and that is your level of interest of who you would like to spend time with. It's rather sad, honestly. And it really kind of says that Jeffree Star really doesn't have that many people that he's close with anymore. Because if he did, if I were Jeffree Star, okay, I would be like flying my personal jet if he even has it around anymore or even I don't care fly in coach or first class or business class or wherever around the world experiencing the world <clears throat> trying to get on every guest list to every fashion show because we know he loves that stuff going here going there seeing that experiences and spending it with the people that I love I don't know that I would want to sit in a room okay listen I have been Jeffree Star's age okay Maybe when I was 22 to 25, but not when I was close, near and 40, did I want to sit in a room for, you know, two, three hours every single day, okay? I did that stuff, okay, on You Now back in the day, and it was draining, and I wasn't making near the kind of money that Jeffree Star did, and it was infiltrating my personal life, and I, you know, like, and, and my husband was like, are you going live again, and stuff like that, and I did it because that's what You Now wanted, and I was trying to say, I was like, finally one day, I was like, I'm done, I'm not doing this stuff anymore, so I don't do lives anymore. Anymore, right? I, I love making YouTube videos, but my personal life is way too important for me to spend 16 hours a day on, on online. It just is. Okay. I do not, to be honest with you, when I sign off for the day, I might check Twitter or Instagram like two more times during the night. But other than that, my phone is down. I'm watching my reality shows. Okay. I'm catching up on my reality shows. Last night, I finished The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip Rowney. And then I watched Vanderpump Pump Rules. I think I watched, oh, I watched the newest episode of Thousand Pound Sisters. I'm like, I'm not like obsessed with being on my phone, doing lives. I don't understand it. And I can tell you right now, if I had the kind of money that Jeffree Star had and the ability to go anywhere in the world, first class, stay anywhere that I wanted to, trust me, you know, and the ability, I mean, he makes up all these fake boyfriends that he has. I would probably get online on one of those like things. I was just hearing like, what's that thing that all the celebrities are on? Andy Cohen just asked Ian Levy if he was on it the other day, Raya or something. It's like for celebrities. I just meet a companion. I'd have like a really good friend that I was just like, hey, listen, I'm going to pay all your bills and you're going to travel with me and we're just going to have the best fun, okay? If I was not married and my best friend Tanya Jean was not married and I had the money that Jeffree Star had, trust me this, okay? It would be uh, uh, how Stella got her groove back with Angela Bassett and Whoopi Goldberg back in the day and I'd be taking my best friend to Jamaica and everywhere around the world paying for those trips and doing all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't be sitting in no room doing TikTok lives, okay? Kissing TikTok, TikTok's ass and being like, I have loved TikTok since I got... Girl, it's desperate, okay? You want to come out and say that you always share your honest opinion, but then you kiss the ass of TikTok because you're so afraid of getting banned from there for good? Come out with your full chest and say what you really think, Jeffree Star. This shows really completely how desperate and pathetic he is because the old Jeffree Star would have said, 
Fuck TikTok. I'm done with it. Y'all don't want me. You want to ban me for a week? Fine. I won't have my presence on TikTok because you thought you were so grand. Now you need TikTok. TikTok don't need you. Okay? And you realize that, which is why you're like, I don't know why I was banned. I have shared my opinion online. for Nobody wants to hear your opinion anymore, girl. Nobody cares. Okay? So this is going to stop in just a second. Hold on a second. I don't know if I was at 20 minutes or 29 minutes, but I think I was at 28, 29 minutes. But anyway, I don't have my rain glass on it, so I can't set, here, see. But anyway, then I see all these people come out and be like, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. Jeffree Star shouldn't be banned from TikTok. Jeffree Star should be able to say whatever he wants to say. Okay. I don't know if y'all know this, but freedom of speech does not apply to social media apps, okay? I'm not sure if you're aware of that. But if you're not, and I don't know if Jeffree Star is, okay? Because basically that's what he was saying. And his thing is that he should have a right to say whatever he wants to say over there. I'm not saying I completely disagree with that, all right? But TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or Twi Twitter are platforms that allow you to be there, okay? If you violate their terms of services, you're no longer allowed to be there anymore. They're privately owned companies, okay? I think sometimes people kind of forget this, right? Like, these are not platforms. I mean, it's not like you're walking on a public beach, okay? Like, these are privately owned companies, okay? You can't just do and say whatever you want to say over there. Period. You just can't, okay? It's actually a huge controversy that came out in 2023. And the huge controversy is where does First Amendment rights start and stop when it comes to social media, okay? There's lawsuits going on with the Supreme Court. Trust me, I know. I actually just looked up one right here. And it says the Supreme Court will set an important precedent for free speech online. This is from the ACLU. And this is from October 19th of 2023. There's actually many, many articles written about it. But as of right now, okay, these are privately owned companies that are allowed to make their rules. They could ban Jeffree Star, period, in the story for no reason whatsoever and just say, hey, we don't want you here anymore. Okay, they could do that right? I'm not saying that he wouldn't have a lawsuit and he couldn't sue him. He can sue for anything in this country, right? But I just wanted to share some things with you guys for this whole Jeffree Star thing. When he goes in and talks about, you know, he's never been able, he basically, he doesn't say it's not fair, but what he says is, I have shared my opinion online for 20 years, okay? Basically saying that nobody else has held him accountable. So I went in and I wanted to look and see what the statute is on these companies, right? Social media, so I looked up, does freedom of speech apply to social media? Social media platforms are private companies and are not bound by the First Amendment. In fact, they have their own First Amendment rights. This means they can moderate the content people post on their websites without violating those users' First Amendment rights, okay? And that is the Freedom Forum. And then I went on here and I looked again, what are the limits of freedom of speech in social media? Content that is generally prohibited on most social media platforms or posts that include gore, child exploitation, hate speech, sexually explicit images, the promotion of self-harm, leaking private information without consent, which is called doxing, and the spread of misinformation and more. Okay, here's the thing. That last part, the spread of misinformation, it's... <laughs> There was a movie that came out years and years and years ago. I think it was called something like uh, The First Monday in October or something. And this came out like in the 70s. But like it spurned this whole conversation about the definition of like pornography and things like that. Okay. Now we're entering a new world where people are talking about what is the definition of misinformation. Okay. To share an opinion online, to share an opinion about something that uh, is of a political nature or things that have to do with world events and things like that. Right. Right. Those could be considered misinformation depending on the company that is doing that. Like, for example, Twitter don't really care, okay? Instagram don't really care. YouTube, they kind of care, okay? Uh, Twitter or t TikTok, apparently they care. Facebook, they really care, okay? There's also a lot being said online that liberal views are, political liberal views are being given a lot more freedom to be said on social media sites than conservative views, okay? So I don't know if that's what happened on this, like I said, I didn't watch the two hour live stream or hour long live stream that he was on. I don't know what he said, right? But Let's just say if he was speculating about something to do with the moon landing or whatever, okay? On YouTube, there's so many conspiracy videos about things like that. They say they're conspiracy videos. It would depend on how he said it. What I do know is, because I know from friends of mine that post stuff and their things get immediately taken down, okay? I know big TikTokers that their stuff gets taken down immediately. And they're like, I didn't even say anything in this TikTok, right? That was anything inappropriate, anything bad whatsoever, 
The thing is, is that I know that TikTok is very, it's one of the reasons why I haven't been real active over there is because TikTok is like very, very quick to ban people, take people down, things like that, right? So am I surprised that Jeffree Star said something that TikTok may have taken the wrong way? No, okay? Is it within their rights as a privately owned company? As of 2020 or 2024 and today, yes, it is, right? Which I think is why he's kind of trying to kiss their ass a little bit. I then go in and it says, does the Constitution protect free speech on social media? It talks about this professor talking about under, that underscores the protections granted by the First Amendment apply solely to government infringements on free speech and do not expend to privately owned entities such as Facebook and Twitter, which would also apply to TikTok, Instagram, and things like that, right? And then it goes in this whole conversation of should free speech apply to social media? Well, that's a huge conversation right now, right? I, I think it would have been more interesting to me, and this is kind of where, in all honesty... I would like to see Jeffree Star as a more experienced influencer go with his conversations. Instead of victimizing himself and talking about how unfair it is that he got banned for seven days and there's a TikTok live event that he really should be attending right now. Okay, when he has literally come on TikTok lives and he has threatened people and called people horrific names, which he could have been banned for that and never was. Okay, whether we like James Charles or not, he's done it with James Charles, okay? Whether or not we like that, that family, that he, he called that woman horrific names, okay? He's done it in the past to other people on TikTok Live. I don't know. Maybe TikTok had had enough with Jeffree Star. I think it would have been a more pertinent conversation, right? If Jeffree Star would have made a YouTube video, not on TikTok, and said, I'm going to put this on YouTube and everybody on YouTube is going to come and watch it and talk about and call it, I got banned on TikTok, everybody would have gone over to his YouTube and watched it and talked about should this whole thing change? Should freedom of speech apply to social media apps? Because there's a lot of people that believe that it should, you know? I understand that there are privately owned companies and there's protections about them, but I really am a believer in First Amendment rights, right? And so do I believe that they, social media sites, should be uh, have the same rules and regulations as newspapers and magazines and things like that? I, I believe that that is a discussion that we need to have. I think that people should, to some degree, have a right to say what they want to say on social media sites as well. But the problem is they're hidden behind this wall of being protected by being privately owned companies, right? This is going to be a huge issue that we're going to see going forward in 2024. It would have been a very pertinent conversation for Jeffree Star to have with his platform as somebody that was uh, directly affected by this, okay? Because right now what we're seeing is a lot of younger people that are being affected by this that have built careers, left college on Twitter or TikTok or YouTube or whatever, okay? Jeffree Star, who is more experienced and working on social media, has been around since the MySpace days, could have talked about his experience in social media, his sharing his opinions, his freedom of speech, this whole situation, this whole conversation. I just wish Jeffrey Starr would start applying his voice that he has and, and bringing it to more important conversations instead of, oh man, everybody wants to make me the villain and I got banned on TikTok and I can't go to this event. Woe is me, Jeffrey Starr, okay? Why don't you make your voice and talk about something important instead of how it personally applies to you, you know? I've talked a lot about things in the last year that personally apply to me and tried to share them on a bigger level to help other people that are going through similar things that I have gone through in my life, right? That's called planting the seed. That's called turning your wounds into wisdom. And I'm not the, listen, the gatekeeper on that, okay? Oprah came up with the term turning your wounds into wisdom. I believe in that statement. I believe in turning in what you went through and sharing that with other people to try to help them. If that hadn't been done to me, if other people hadn't shared their wounds that they went through and turned them into wisdom to help me, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I'm so thankful for the people that shared what they went through and their learning experience and going forward what we could go through. You know? I was talking, we went on this catamaran trip when we were in Mexico, right? And I was talking to this mother and her son. And um, her son was sharing, I, I think her son was like 20, 21. And she and her son were sharing some personal things with me about like their journey together and his journey and things like that, right? And I said something to the effect of that one of the things that makes me very, very happy is that the younger generation is able to live, the younger LGBTQIA plus community is able to live in a way that I was not able to live in when I was that age 
age, right? That I was scared to death to walk down, even in Boys Town in Chicago, Illinois, holding hands with somebody that I liked, okay? Out of fear of being gay bashed, right? And th this young man looked at me and said, you're a pioneer. I go, no, I'm not a pioneer. I'm not, I appreciate that. I'm not. The people that came 50 years before me, they are the pioneers. The people that came 30, 50, 60, 100 years before them, they are the pioneers that helped pave the way for what I was able to live in. And I lived with a lot of privilege as part of the LGBTQIA plus community because of the people that came 10 to 20 years before me, you know? And so I just try to share my experience, strength, and hope of what I've gone through. Jeffree Star, why can't you do that with the experiences that you have in your life, okay? Instead of whining about getting banned on TikTok, why don't you start an important conversation about First Amendment rights on social media? Since you have such a huge social media presence and you've built your career on social media, you might be somebody that people might actually listen to, right? But that's not really important to you. What's really important to you is winning the TikTok battle. That's ultimately what it's about, right? Which is why you're tipping yourself allegedly from your own company, Jeffree Star Cosmetics, to make it look like you're winning these battles that you're not actually winning against, okay? Which, I mean, in itself is an issue that TikTok can have, if that's true. But I've been that's been brought to me by several people that have witnessed that. So I don't know if that's true or not, but it's like, what's really important to you, okay? Jeffree Star has had the opportunity over several periods in his life to come out and talk about important issues. And I'm not saying he has to. This is where people are like, he doesn't have to do that. I understand you don't have to do that, but why wouldn't you want to? Like, that's always been, the, you know, when I would talk about Tana Mojo back in the day being a good role model to her 12 to 18-year-old audience, and people would say, she doesn't have to do that. No, you're absolutely right. Tana Mojo never had that responsibility, and she never had to do that. Although, I do believe that there is a certain amount of responsibility that goes along with being a, uh, a role model and a public figure. I do believe that, okay, to some extent. But furthermore, the question on a personal level, okay, is why would you not want to do that? I that baffles me. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to be that person. That like that makes no sense to me whatsoever, right? So I don't know. But apparently his ban is almost up and he'll be back on TikTok Live battling people for princess castles and I don't know, whatever you battle for over there. I could care less, okay? Do I think it's the last time that he'll get banned from TikTok? No. Jeffree Star doesn't learn from his lessons, okay? He just complains about what he goes through and how unfair it is, all right? Give me a break. So anyway, let's talk about this Colleen Ballinger thing. So I was uh, tagged in this by Spill Some Tea With Me on Instagram. Hey! <laughs> We were messaging back and forth, and I said, I just want to thank you so much. So, Spill Some Tea With Me is an Instagram account. If I remember, I will uh, link her account below. And I said, I just want to thank you. And Adam McIntyre just shouted um, her out recently in a video. And, and some other people have recently mentioned her as well. She is right on top of stuff whenever it happens. She mostly focuses a lot on, like, H3 podcasts and things like that. But I, 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 mentioned, I said to her, thank you so much for always tagging me and stuff and including me and stuff. You keep me up to date on this stuff when it doesn't happen. Because to be honest with you, I could care less to watch another Colleen Ballinger vlog as long as I live, right? I, I just don't want to. I don't want to give her the views. And personally, that's how I feel. And I don't really have the time to watch somebody talk for 15 minutes about rocks. I could give a rat's ass, Okay. So she can dip in for a minute and talk about something about the incident or what happened to her last summer so that people will run over there and watch 15 minutes of a rock vlog, okay? Just to hear that one minute where she says something. It's very calculated and it's very divisive. And again, to me, it's using somebody else's traumatic experiences, the victims, it's using the victim's traumatic experiences, okay, to, to make money, to get views, and to get subscribers off of the victim's backs, okay? It's disgusting is what it is, all right? And again, victimizes herself and says what I went through last year and says the story that was made up about me. Really, girl? Okay, we're going to still continue to play with this. Now, like, I'm holding to the fact that she's going to come out with an apology. She's going to have to at some point, okay? You know, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous to me at this point. So, Colleen Ballinger comes out in this vlog. She's sitting up against her couch. And, um, so, <laughs> I put on here, not that Colleen Ballinger is being reduced to being included in a Jeffree Star video. <laughs> sorry, girl. I'm sorry, okay? I mean... Come out and address it, and you'll get your whole video. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, she says in there, she's talking about this audition that she did on Broadway. 
And she ha she ha she always is saying this. Like, I have vlog clips of my kids. If you guys want to see them, put it in the comment section below. I have vlog clips of this. If you want to see it, put it in the comment section below. Basically feeding out all these vlog clips, which says she was vlogging the whole time that she was on break. She had her attorney telling her, do not post these vlogs. It's a bad look. Okay, that's what she was being told at that time. Don't po post these. She was still filming. Okay, that's very important to note. That during the entire time, she has said it herself multiple times, okay? I have video footage. I have vlogs. I was vlogging at this time. I have this vlog footage to post if you guys want to see it. So the entire time, the victims were coming out with their stories. And everybody was like, oh my god. All the fans of Colleen Ballinger was like, Colleen Ballinger is going through the worst time. This is so hard for Colleen. I feel so bad for Colleen. Colleen was behind the scenes making money on her old videos that people were watching at an insane amount, okay, to go check for everything that she had said back in the day. She was still making money off of merch. She already had tons of money sitting in the bank. She had just come off of a tour, okay, that ended up getting canceled because of her own actions. And she never put down the camera, not once. <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised since Josh David Evans came out and said that she couldn't put the camera down on her own honeymoon. So I'm not really surprised why she couldn't put the camera down when she had the worst allegations that she wants to say ruined her career. It was the worst year of her life, yet you couldn't put down the vlogging camera, okay? I would like to see vlogs, Colleen Ballinger, of you talking behind the scenes about the victims and how pissed off you are that they're actually coming out and calling you out. Is there footage of that? Could we have vlog footage of you talking to your attorney and the advice that your attorney is giving you? Do you have vlog footage of your conversations with Joy Graceffa, Trisha Paytas, Rosanna Pancino? Could we see those conversations between you and Trisha Paytas? Do you have vlog conversations of that? Do you have vlog conversations of you and your husband talking about how you're going to have to downsize because you're not making any money anymore? Do you have vlog conversations of how you're going to address the victims or how pissed off you are they actually came out and held you accountable? Do you have vlog conversations with Corey DeSoto? Do you even talk to Corey DeSoto anymore? Because you haven't mentioned him in forever and he was your best Judy for a long time, okay? But no, you can't talk about Corey DeSoto anymore. And in fact, you can't talk about your own brother anymore in videos, can you? Okay? Because to talk about your own brother means that you need to also address Oliver. And you're not going to do that, are you? Okay? One of the reasons why you come, won't come out and talk about your tour is because if you come out and talk about your tour, you're going to have to talk about Becky. Becky. One of the reasons why you won't come out and talk about the allegations from last year and actually call them the allegations and only call them the worst thing that you went through in 2023 is because you would have to address Adam McIntyre, okay? You also have to come out and address the things that Cody Rance came out and said, but you're not going to do that, are you? All right? So you just call them lies like uh, uh, JoJo Seawall did, a lie that somebody ran with. And everybody believes that that's a big fan of yours. You won't actually come out and say that, okay? You won't talk about your brother, because of Oliver. You won't come out and do that. You won't come out and talk about your live shows and all that kind of stuff. You mentioned it one time in a vlog, and you got such backlash over it that you will never do that again, because you couldn't delete comments fast enough, fast enough with Becky's name in it, okay? Because you won't even acknowledge these people that rode so hard for you, that literally gave you the career that you have, Okay? These were not haters. This is very similar to Jaclyn Hill and her husband talking about the haters, the haters, the haters. Jaclyn Hill's people that come for her are people that are extremely disappointed in her because she's never come out and addressed anything in her bad business practices, okay? I think that one of the things that is missed in this whole story about Colleen Ballinger is that all these people that were in the group chats, I'm not just talking about the names that we all know, but all the people that were in the group chats, okay? All the people that have left her side that were huge fans of Colleen Ballinger were the people that literally built her up and gave her the career that they did because they rode so hard for her. They built fan groups around her. They built, they bought her books. They went to her shows. They got meet and greets with her. They watched her videos. I mean, unbelievable amount of times, okay? They were the ones that helped build her career. And yet, they're the ones that she's turned her back on. All right? So anyway, she gets in this vlog, and for like a minute, she talks about this audition that she did for, for Broadway, and that the audition went really well, and actually she got the part. Now, the part that she leaves out is that she doesn't talk about what the play was, okay? She doesn't talk about that the, actually that she got cast in the role of Pinocchio in the Broadway musical version of Pinocchio. No, I'm lying. <laughs> That was a joke. That was a parody. Okay, but that would have been funny actually if the if the if the audition was for Pinocchio because Colin Ballinger is the biggest liar in the entire world that wants to point the finger at everybody else being a liar. <laughs> Colin Ballinger on Broadway as Pinocchio. I would have lived if that had been the Broadway play. But anyway, she says that she got this Broadway play, but then it didn't fall through. And her words are. 
hold on a second, I have them written down here, um, because a story came out about me that was completely made up. What story, Colleen? Well, Cody Rance came out with evidence. Adam McIntyre responded to it with evidence. Becky came out and shared her story with evidence. Oliver came out and shared his story with evidence. Many other people came out and shared their stories with evidence. You know? Um, I, I, what's the made-up story? Trisha Paytas came out and talked about her OnlyFans being leaked, okay? And that allegedly you were doing viewing parties. Is that the made-up story you're referring to? Could you let us know? You, you did a Q&A and you asked people what questions they wanted to know in the Q&A. My question to you is, what is the made-up story? Is the made-up story that you were body shaming fans behind their backs and then kissing their ass to their faces? Was the made-up story that you were having inappropriate conversations with minors that there's factual evidence to? Is the made-up story that you were leaking and, and exposing Trisha Paytas' nudes from OnlyFans or having viewing parties? What's the made-up story, Colleen? Could you let us just know maybe at least one made-up story? Oh, was the made-up story the green face versus black face? Is that what the made-up story was? That your lawyers came out? Is that what you lost the audition over? Okay, because you could just come out and say that that was the made-up story. Because then what you'll say is, I never lied. I lost the part over the green face versus black face. But your attorneys came out and proved that that was incorrect, right? So, if that's the made-up story, what made-up story are you referring to? Can you let us know what the made-up story is? Can you stop speaking in ambiguities and start speaking in specifics? If you're so upset about this situation, okay, that you said in your song that, it, you know, you made some mistakes and you need to move on and blah, 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 whatever, then why are you continuing to hold on to it? Either come out and fully address it with specifics because you know the people that have held on to you are going to hold on to things like made up stories, a lie that you can run with. They don't care about specifics. Because if you give them specifics and the victims give them evidence, okay, then you will lose those fans. Those fans that have held on, okay, that live in this fantasy world of Hogwarts like you live in, okay, that if you come out and you specifically say, Things about Becky, Oliver, Adam, and the other victims. You specifically come out and talk about the group chats. You specifically come out and say this stuff. Not an ambiguity, but you come out and speak about it specifically, okay? You know that evidence will be thrown in your face. And not probably even by the victims at this point, but about the multiple channels that have covered this, including Swoop, okay? So you're going to come out and have to deal with all of that. You don't want to do that. Because you have a remaining few fans that are unwilling to see the truth. That, that have been holding on to you calling them made-up stories and lies. But the reality is, if you come out and specifically talk about what are the made-up stories and lies, and people come out and factually prove you wrong, because you've never really, from your own mouth, addressed what the made-up stories, what the lies are, what made it the worst year of 2023. You've never come out and specifically said that. If you specifically come out and say that, okay, and Trisha Paytas comes out and says, Wait a second. I have text messages to prove that you apologized, okay, for the nudes. Adam McIntyre comes out with this. These people come out with this. These people come out with that and show that. Then some of those remaining fans that you have held on to that are like, okay, well, I thought they were made up stories and lies. Now she's come out and talked about it and they're proving it with facts. They can't be made up lies anymore. I can't continue to hold on to this. Then you've lost those people, okay? And you can't go back to that old story that they're made up lies and stories, which is why you won't come out and specifically talk about it, right? But you're going to have to because something's going to happen in 2024 that's going to force you in a corner to come out and talk about this because you cannot continue in vlog, five vlogs later, five vlogs later, six vlogs later, whatever, to string this along and throw a piece out there, okay? At some point, somebody's going to string these things that you've said in these vlogs together and put them together and do a huge expose and it's going to screw the pitch for you, all right? And then you're going to come out and you're going to have to come out and talk about this. I don't know why I don't do it. That'd be a great idea for a video, but there's probably somebody out there already working on it, okay? 
putting this little piece together that you said, putting that piece together, and they're going to come out with a video saying everything that uh, Colleen Ballinger has said about the incident, and they're going to string that all together, and they're going to prove that everything that you said is completely a lie, okay, and manipulation of your audience even further, and what it's going to prove is that you haven't changed from anything that's happened in 2023, and it's going to bring this all back up again. It's going to be a huge, huge YouTuber, okay? It's going to be somebody on a huge level that is going to address this in such a way that you cannot handle it. And you're going to be forced to come out and address this. Not to mention, I think that there are other people out there, and Adam even said this, that there are other people out there that have stories that are similar to his, all right? So when more and more people come in, continue to come out and talk about this, the story is not going to die. and You're going to eventually have to address it. But I don't know. Maybe like Meredith Mark, she'll continue to talk about the lies and the rumors. But I don't know. I don't know how you're going to plan to get yourself out of this. Maybe you got vlog footage of that. Could you share that with us? Of your plan? Of talking to your rocks and how you're going to get yourself out of this? Now that is vlog footage that I would like to see, okay? <laughs> but I got better things to do like go and Google search moose versus deer, okay? So I'm going to let y'all go and I'm going to go watch Vanderpump Rules and Google search moose and deer. I love y'all. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.